Hello everyone, a very good evening. Welcome to yet another webinar as a part of our webinar series for patient support and cancer awareness. I'm Yasmin Khanum, clinical dietitian at DS Research Center, Hyderabad, and your host for today. The topic for our webinar today is nutrition and cancer. What is the correlation? Today, we are not just going to explore about the association of nutrition and cancer, but also mark National Nutrition Month, Portion Ma, which is celebrated across the country in the month of September by creating awareness on nutrition. We are lucky to have among us eminent speaker, dietitian Suarna Sile Savant from Mumbai. Dietitian Suarna Savant is a clinical dietitian with 23 years of clinical experience. She was the chief dietitian in Jeslock Hospital for 20 years. And currently, she is the chief dietitian in HCG Cancer Center, Mumbai. She holds a post graduation diploma in dietetics from Srimati Natai Bai Damodar Thakarse Women's University, Mumbai. Ms. Savant was awarded by the State Health Minister for an article on pediatric obesity, Swayam Siddha Award by HCG Hospital, and has written several papers in newspaper. Welcome on board, dietitian Swarna Savant. Thank you. We also have other two panel members with us, Dietitian Barnali Nandi Parkayeshta and Dietitian Manjari Bhatsrai. Dietitian Barnali Nandi Parkayeshta is from Guwahati. She is a postgraduate in food and nutrition from Assam Agricultural University. She has an experience of more than 24 years in the field of medicine and health industry. Her vision is to serve the community by applying the art and science of human nutrition. Welcome on board, Dietitian Barnali Nandi Parkeshta. Our other panelist, Dietitian Manjari Bajpai, is from Varanasi. She has done her graduation and post graduation in food and nutrition from Banaras Hindu University. With 23 years of experience working at hospitals like Leelawati and Saifi Hospital, Mumbai, she joined DS Research Center in 2013. And since then, she is guiding cancer patients regarding their diet and playing an important role in spreading awareness about nutrition. She is also a secretary for IAPN India Varanasi chapter. She is a life member of Indian Dietetic Association and Nutrition Society of India. I welcome you on board, Dietitian Manjari Bhatsvay. We all know cancer is rapidly becoming a global pandemic, exerting tremendous physical, emotional burden on individuals, families, community, and health system. There's a significant increase in the number of cancer cases around the world. In India, the cancer figure has risen to 3.3 million and is predicted to rise to 19.3 million new cases per year by 2025. And that is why it is really important to create awareness and prevent new cancer cases. Although the causes of cancer are not completely understood, there are numerous causative factors, some being modifiable such as obesity, physical inactivity, inappropriate diet, alcohol intake, tobacco use on environmental pollutants. Nutrition is becoming uh, coming at the forefront as a principal modified determinant of chronic diseases, including cancer, both as curative and preventive therapy. I request the back end team to uh, change the slide. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah. So we should consider nutrition a vital factor for uh, management of cancers. Good nutrition is important for cancer patients, so healthy eating habits are important during cancer treatment and also after the cancer treatment. Cancer and treatment may cause side effects that affect the nutrition, 
mostly resulting in malnutrition, which is associated with anorexia and cachexia in cancer patients. Next slide, please. Now I request our guest speaker, dietitian Suvarna Silesh, to share her experience on the topic and begin with her presentation. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for having me here today. So we'll straight off start with our topic, like how you can take your journey of cancer with proper nutrition and be well. Uh, we all know that cancer, the first effect on our body, whatever you do, will cause malnutrition. So th there are various causes of malnutrition, like you undergo certain surgeries, you undergo radiation, you undergo chemotherapy, because of which malnutrition is caused. There is muscle wasting and you become more prone to infection. And then ultimately we uh, get into cachexia, wherein there is loss of muscle mass. The patient cannot get up from the bed. The skeletal muscle mass is wasting. And hence the cycle continues wherein the patient feels weak, doesn't eat, and more weight loss takes place. Now, if we see the impact of uh, malnutrition, we will see because of malnutrition, if a person is malnourished, uh, the morbidity increases. If there is any uh, infection or if there is any surgery, the wound healing takes a lot of time. The number of infections that the patient has, like mucositis, etc., is always on the rise. Complications uh, increase, convalescence, getting uh, uh, good health again also uh, uh, goes down. Mortality increases, the treatment cost increases because the length of stay in the hospital increases. And all this thoroughly reduces the quality of life of the patient. Now, why nutrition is important during cancer treatment? First and foremost is we have to see that the person maintains weight. Uh, very often we are asked whether the patient will gain weight if he has lost. The very first thing that we have to see that we have to prevent weight loss and not aim at weight gain. We have to maintain the nutrition stores in the body. In the sense, we have to see that we do not fall into any nutritional deficiencies like hemoglobin, sodium, potassium, all other vitamins, and hence the patient should have a very good diet. Nutrition is also important because it lowers the risk of infection to all these patients. Also, if the nutrition is at a higher level, like I always tell my patients that if you have a good backup of nutrition, the treatment toleration with lesser side effects is better. There is fast recovery and as I earlier said also that we can improve the quality of life of the said patient. Now, how easy is this? This is very easy. We just have to remember that whenever we are eating food on different days, try to keep a sort of a rainbow in your plate. Remember the rainbow colors, the Vibgyor colors. Like we should know that we should take red in the form of watermelon, strawberries, tomatoes, apples, etc. Orange because it promotes collagen growth. It gives you good immunity like fruits like oranges or pumpkins, etc. You should have a yellow in your plate because it will help your digestion and immune system in the form of pineapple, bananas, uh, yellow capsicums. Uh, green on your plate because it is a powerful detoxifier and fights free radicals, which helps furthermore in the treatment as it improves your immune system. Greens you can have in various forms like broccoli, spinach, French, uh, French beans, kiwis, etc. Have blue or purple on your plate because it will improve the mineral absorption, which I discussed. I said there should not be any nutritional deficiencies because of your therapies and also uh, white on your plate because it activates your natural killer cells and reduces the cancer risk. So if you have all these colors on your plate when you're eating your food, it looks good also and you feel like eating also. What should your ideal plate look like? Ideal plate, half of your plate should be full of vegetables. 
whether it is in the form of cooked vegetable or raw. Now, when it comes to raw vegetable for cancer patients, you have to be a little careful if you are on therapies like chemotherapy, etc. It's best that you boil your food and you eat. One fourth can be your lean protein, that is your fish, poultry. If you do not eat non-veg, you can have tofu, that is soya paneer and other protein substitutes like your sprouts, etc. And the other one fourth should be your whole grains like barley, wheat. You can have oats. You can have uh, uh, brown rice. If you don't like brown rice, you can have the normal rice, which is cooked properly. All the food has to be cooked properly, which is also very important. And there are certain kitchen ingredients which are very helpful. Like usually we think of products that we can buy from out to keep up with our health. But there are so many things in our kitchen itself that can help you. Like, for example, mostly the people who are taking cancer treatment will see that their hemoglobin always is going up and down and sometimes they need blood transfusions also. Garden crest seeds, Haleem that they call, are easily available at any grocery shop and you can have them soaked in water and they will really show a good rise in hemoglobin. If you are a diabetic and still having cancer, you can have methi because it controls blood sugars. You can have ulsi, that is flax seeds. Many people have started eating this. It is heart protective. Haldi, which we all know is anti-inflammatory. You can have haldi milk. You can have haldi, add haldi to your soups, your vegetables, etc. And heme, which is very good for digestion. Because usually we see many of our patients also complain that after chemotherapy or radiation, the digestion becomes a big problem. Secondly, uh, Anti-inflammatory, if you eat walnuts in the morning, it is very good. Then these people have nausea and acidity. If you eat a little elaichi or keep some elaichi in your mouth all the time, the feeling of nausea and acidity decreases a lot. Second is the lemon, which is vitamin C. It is an antioxidant. If you have some lemon on your sprouts, etc., the absorption of iron also is done very well. So always on all the protein products, try to squeeze some lime. Now, uh, there are a lot of side effects. Whatever you say, usually people do face a lot of side effects when uh, they are taking their treatment. Now, uh, most important, mostly you will hear that saying that they have nausea and hence their food intake goes very low. So if possible, if you have somebody else to cook, then you should remove yourself from the cooking process because that process itself gives you so many smells in the kitchen that you feel nauseated more. Avoid small, strong smells like, you know, your perfumes, uh, your agarbattis or udbattis that they call, which uh, you set up when you do your RPs or set your diyas. That will reduce your nausea. Always add some mint or ginger or so a dash of lemon to your dishes, which reduces nausea. And always when you are eating, sit upright. Don't slouch and eat whenever you're eating or drinking. Also, do not stand and eat or drink. Always sit while you're drinking even water. There are certain taste changes because the taste buds sometimes get killed because of the chemotherapy that you're taking for which always the doctors always tell you to cleanse your mouth properly. Also, this will avoid any mucositis as a side, uh, side effect. Always maintain good oral hygiene. Uh, avoid mu uh, metal utensils for uh, cooking, like uh, particularly like iron or something, because these utensils will put in their taste also in the food and which is not tolerated by many of the patients. Try to eat not very hot or very cold foods. Try to eat food at room temperature. This helps a lot if your taste has changed. And always increase your fluid intake. Have a lot of water throughout the day so that your taste changes are to the minimum extent. If you have loss of appetite, try not to eat just breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Set a plate in front of you and have lots of things on the plate. That itself is going to put you off. So always eat five or six smaller meals in a day. It helps a lot. And eat the best meal, the largest meal when you are the hungriest. Eat at that time. Start with always high protein foods rather than sugary foods or carbohydrate foods when your appetite is the strongest. So you get the maximum protein in the body. Keep your favorite high calorie foods and beverages always within easy reach. So if it's a chikki or something like that, always keep it within easy, easy reach so that whenever you're hungry, you can munch on that. Things like dry fruits, etc. 
try to be as physically active as possible whenever you are in the peak, uh, peak of your health to stimulate your appetite it helps a lot avoid very high fat greasy and spicy or a lot of sweet foods because that increases your nausea and makes you feel full sip on beverages like usually the dietitian will give you a oral nutritional supplement as a protein rich powder or something sip them between the meals rather than with the meals because otherwise they will fill you up and you will have less of food because you are filled up with that fluid which is wrong practice now uh, uh, diarrhea etc will be covered by other dietitian also so i will not talk much about it how diarrhea will be taken care of so we'll skip this even constipation uh, I, in short i can just say drink a plenty of liquids because li having liquids is also going to reduce your nausea okay this is what i was talking that when you have to take care of your oral hygiene mostly we will see patients intake goes down because the patient is suffering from mucositis or esophagitis wherein the ulcers are so bad that even if the patient is feeling hungry the patient can't eat anything and for this you have to encourage good oral hygiene practices to give comfort enhance taste and stimulate the appetite we have to tell the patient to avoid any uh, known irritants such as very acidic foods or spicy salty foods which will create more problem for us or even for that matter avoid dry or rough foods tobacco and alcohol is a total no no you have to encourage adequate fluid intake some uh, warm or cold milk uh, or some cream soups are better tolerated alter the consistency and the temperature of foods from person to person sometimes some people feel better with a little colder foods let them have it that way or some people feel that warm foods suit them let them have them that way you can have some mashed solids pureed solids or you, you know we give these baby foods like porridges when we are babies mm -hmm. try to give foods like that those are better tolerated by such patients then you can also dunk or moisten the dry food dense and you have to ensure that vitamin and mineral needs are always taken care of which we as dietitians always keep a watch out for now there are certain nutritional myths and facts uh, when it comes to cancer first is most people will go to googlebaba.com stop doing that we have eminent doctors dietitians who are there to help you so because whatever given on google might be okay for one person but it might not suit the other person because the cancers are different the stage of cancers are different your uh, difficulty of swallowing chewing will differ from every individual many people have been taught that juices or juice diets or some fast are safe and a productive practice when you have cancer but juices cannot meet your basic nutrient needs as it significantly reduces the consumption of other food groups as they will fill you up people who practice these methods need to be aware that just having juices significantly also reduces the fiber in your diet which will again lead to constipation also when uh, people hear that they have cancer the first thing to stop and out of the diet is sugar because people feed sugar feeds cancer it's not like that you should stop eating sugars in a way wherein all sugary items all sugar should be but if you are in a stage where you cannot eat anything and only sweets are soothing soothing for you you can add a little sugar or jaggery and you can eat it a raw food diet prevents and cures cancer a total myth this is never going to work carrot beet juice is the most famous juice that every individual will tell you to have if you have cancer but it is not a medicine for cancer take it is not harmful but you cannot claim that it will cure your disease meat and dairy products cause cancer and hence many patient become vegans which is also wrong herbal supplements will help to fight cancer some people go to extent to avoid all the treatment they just take some herbal supplements then the cancer goes to the next stage and then it becomes too late 
Another myth is eating soya foods raises your risk for breast cancer. It is a myth. The fact is soya foods are safe for women and provide fiber and they are cancer fighters. But why this myth came up was that in certain countries, only soya foods are eaten as the base. Anything that you eat a lot, I'm repeating again and again, you have to eat things in moderation. If you go and extend and excel in something else, only eating one food at a time, just because that is helpful, then uh, there's a simple logic that if only one, any one food would be a cure for cancer, the whole world would be cancer free by now. Another myth is organic plant-based foods can offer extra protection against cancer. No. Eating mostly plant foods reduces your risk, but organic foods have never been proven to be better than the normal foods. Neutropenic diet needs to be followed whenever your dietitian or doctor tells you to do so when your neutrophils, that is your blood counts, are a little low. At that time, you have to see that you follow all hygienic practices. You will have to avoid all raw foods at that time and street food will be a total no-no. But neutropenic diet should not be followed without your doctor's advice. Now, uh, we all know this, that uh, tobacco is the leading cause of cancer, but just below it, you can see that adult obesity is just going to cross tobacco after some years because obesity and sedentary lifestyle is going to be a leading cause of cancer and hence have a balanced diet. Do not go behind any fat diets wherein they say eat only this or eat only that. Just have proteins for two days. Just have um, fruits for two days. You have to have a balanced diet. No such diet works. And hence you should have some physical activity. You can always ask your healthcare provider regarding the right physical activity for you. If you need a physiotherapist, a doctor will tell you to do so. Engage in regular physical activity every day. You can do some yogasanas if you feel like. Avoid inactivity and return to normal daily activities immediately after your treatment as soon as possible. And aim to exercise at least 150 minutes per week. This doesn't mean you need to go to the gym. It can just be a small brisk walk. Include strength training exercises if you feel like at least two days per week and if your healthcare provider is giving you the approval for it. Like I said, it is not a compulsion that you need to go to the gym always. Now, uh, proteins. When it comes to proteins, many people feel that you have to buy these protein supplements which are so, so very expensive. But it is not so. There are low-cost protein foods like you can see milk and milk products that is paneer, uh, milk in itself, curd are high in protein, green peas are high in protein, the soya and soya products, you get tofu that is soya paneer nowadays. If you are non-vegetarians, you can have eggs. Then there is sattu that is made from a chickpea flour that can be had and sprouts are also very, very rich in protein. So the proteins itself are available in our kitchen. No need to go out and buy high protein powders if it is not recommended. Low cost protein foods at home, what you can prepare is just an egg custard or you can make dry fruit milkshakes. You can have thick buttermilk. Uh, amylase rich flour can be uh, prepared at home. Soya bean bhajis you can have. You can have rotis wherein wheat flour and soya bean is mixed together, which makes it a good protein. You can have green peas roti. You can have sprouted salads. You can have humus made at home. And all these things are going to help you in your protein intake. These are certain recipes which I have presented here, like how you can prepare an egg custard. It's just egg, milk, sugar. Then how you make uh, amylase rich flour. So on the days where you have problem with chewing, swallowing, you just take that flour and it is very, very rich in protein and you can skip the protein powders then. If you can take it in the form of porridge, etc., it is a very, very good substitute. Then uh, sattu, which is made from chana dal. I'm sure many people must be knowing what is sattu and how to make it. You can just use it as a drink or this atta itself can be added to your chapati atta to make the chapatis soft also and very rich in protein also. 
then there are cutlets which you can make from soya bean you get these soya bean nuggets or the soya bean granules also in the market now you can mix all the type of vegetables you can mix some dal with it and make it a very rich protein so even if you feel like eating some junky food at some time you can have these soya bean cutlets uh now uh like now we all discussed about how to go about if you get cancer but there are certain cancer prevention recommendations also that how can you prevent cancer so how do you do that limit consumption of sugar and sweetened drinks like your cokes etc limit alcohol consumption do not use uh, supplements for cancer prevention that is what i said about the herbal supplements just going on herbal supplement diet for mothers always breastfeed your babies if you can and that is almost a very good prevention against breast cancer after a cancer diagnosis never forget to follow up all the recommendations whatever you can try to be at your healthy weight always be physically active instead of being a couch potato eat a diet which is rich in whole grains vegetables fruits and beans limit your consumption of fast foods and processed foods which we keep on hammering every other day limit consumption of red and processed meats and that can prevent cancer as far as possible thank you very much thank you so much ma'am i think it was wonderfully explained it's our privilege to hear from you and share screen with such an experienced professional like you you also spoke about prevention of cancer which brings to my mind a quote that prevention is a whole lot less costly than treatment and may be more effective so it's really very important to follow preventive measures to keep disease at bay and reduce the global burden of cancer moving to our panel members uh, dietitian barnali and dietitian manjari i have few questions in hand with me i may ask if you are willing to take Ma'am, do you want? Yes. Sorry, your voice is cracking. Okay, I have few questions in my hand. If you are willing to take, I would ask you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, please, please go, go ahead. ahead. That's wonderful. Then I'll begin with Dietitian Bernali. Uh, how to manage constipation complaint by patients because it's very commonly seen in uh, patients after radiation and chemotherapy. So there, it's obvious that there are chances of. change in the bubble movement and uh, that may result in diarrhea or constipation so what dietary changes can help to deal with this condition okay yes me uh, this is a very important question aur ye jo hai na constipation problem zyada tar dikhai deta hai cancer patients mein jo after uh, treatment bhi ye side effect hota hai waise bhi cancer hone se bhi ye hota hai constipation problem to isse deal karna bahut zaruri hota hai क्योंकि ये प्रॉब्लम होने से क्या होता है पेशेंट का जैसे इनटेक कम हो जाता है इफ द स्टमक इज कंस्टिपेटेड ना तो उनका इनटेक कम हो जाता है तो ये ट्रीट करना बहुत जरूरी है पहले तो बहुत ज्यादा पानी पीना है प्लेंटी ऑफ फ्लूड ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है लाइक एट टू टेन ग्लासेस ऑफ वाटर ये हम लोग को पीना ही है पेशेंट को बोलना है बिकॉज एडवांस केसेस ऑफ कैंसर में ये सारा दिखाई देता है प्रॉब्लम कॉम्प्लिकेशन कंस्टिपेशन ठीक है फिर एंगेज इन रेगुलर फिजिकल एक्टिविटी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी जितना आप सह सको जितना आप कर पाओ उतना आप फिजिकल एक्टिविटी करो ये भी बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि कोई कुछ कुछ योगासन है ना जिसमें आप कंस्टिट्यूशन प्रॉब्लम भी सॉल्व हो सकता है देन फ्लूड इनटेक तो मैंने बोल ही दिया वो इंक्रीज करना है फिर फाइबर इनटेक इंक्रीज करना है फाइबर इनटेक कैसे इंक्रीज होगा जैसे हम लोग को वेजिटेबल्स बहुत सारा लेना है फिर फ्रूट्स लेना है उससे हम लोग को फाइबर मिलेगा तो वो एग्जेक्टिव होता है इट विल जस्ट हम लोग का जो कंस्टिट्यूशन प्रॉब्लम है ना ये सॉल्व करेगा फिर हम लोग को फाइबर और कैसे इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं जैसे होल ग्रेन्स ले सकते हैं फिर हम लोग ब्राउन राइस ले सकते हैं फिर रॉ फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स लेग्यूस ले सकते हैं बीन्स ले सकते हैं ड्राई फ्रूट्स ले सकते हैं पॉपकॉर्न ले सकते हैं सीड्स ले सकते हैं एंड नाट्स टू द डाइट ये सारा चीज हम लोग डाइट में ऐड कर सकते हैं और एक चीज है बहुत अच्छा है जो वंडरफुल फ्रूट है पपाया 
इट्स ए गुड लेग्जेटिव जैसे रॉ पपाया हम लोग दाल में डाल दे या सब्जी में डाल दे तो हम लोग रॉ पपाया ले लिया और राइप पपाया एज ए फ्रूट हम लोग ले सकते हैं इट्स ए वेरी गुड लेग्जेटिव और एक हो गया आपका फ्रूट रिच इन विटामिन सी जैसे साइट्रस फूड हो गया मौसमी जूस हो गया पाइन जूस हो गया लेमन जूस हो गया ये सारा भी बहुत अच्छा लेग्जेटिव है तो ये सारा पेशेंट्स ले सकते हैं अगर किसी को कॉन्स्टिपेशन का प्रॉब्लम अगर फेस कर रहे हैं और और एक हो गया सुपर फूड घी घी जैसे बहुत लोगों को पसंद भी है घी भी बहुत अच्छा लेग्जेटिव का काम करता है तो ये घी भी ले सकते हैं पेशेंट तो लाइक वी कैन मैनेज इन दैट वे ना डाइटरी मैनेजमेंट हम लोग डाइट में आकर ये सब इंक्लूड करें ना तो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन प्रॉब्लम जो है ना वो सॉल्व हो सकता है कुछ हद तक थैंक थैंक यू यू मैम एक और क्वेश्चन है आप ही के लिए हम लोग अपनी प्रैक्टिस में देखते हैं हमारे डीएस रिसर्च सेंटर में यूजली एडवांस्ड स्टेज कैंसर पेशेंट्स आते हैं तो उनमें होता यह है कि बहुत ज्यादा फ्लक्चुएटिंग बायोकेमिकल कॉम्पोनेट होते हैं उनके बॉडी में लाइक अगर पेशेंट इज कमिंग विद लिवर कैंसर they'll usually mm-hmm. have high levels of serum bilirubin mm-hmm. so how can we normalize serum bilirubin with the diet what dietary restrictions or recommendations you would give to a cancer patient with the liver cancer to ye bahut acha sawal hai is a good question jaise hum log ka daily practice mein milta hai na patients jo advanced cases of cancer hote hai na to udhar mein jaundice jo jaundice dikhai deta hai जो बिलीरबिल लेवल बहुत हाई होता है वन से हाई होता है वन जैसे हम लोग का लिमिट है तो उससे बहुत हाई होता है तो उससे क्या होता है एक तो वॉमिटिंग टेंडेंसी आ जाता है पेशेंट को नोजिया जैसा होता है अगर बिलीरबिन हाई है तो तो उसको कंट्रोल करना बहुत जरूरी है तो हम लोग डायटरी जैसे डाइट से हम लोग कैसे उसको कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं ना ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है जैसे सर्टिन मेडिकेशन इंक्लूडिंग केमोथेरेपी ये एक साइड इफेक्ट भी होता है जॉन्डिस जैसे कुछ कुछ कैंसर के साथ जैसे कैंसर ऑफ द गोल ब्लडर कैंसर ऑफ द लीवर फिर कैंसर ऑफ द पेंक्रिया ये सारा में हम लोग को जॉन्डिस दिखाई देता है ठीक है एडवांस स्टेजेस में जॉन्डिस दिखाई देता है तो हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं पेशेंट को बोल सकते हैं बहुत सारा पानी पीजिए पहले तो पानी एक अच्छा रिमेडी है पानी पीजिए एट टू टेन ग्लासेस ऑफ वाटर फिर क्लियर सूप ले सकते हैं ब्रॉथ ले सकते हैं फिर क्लियर वेजिटेबल सूप ले सकते हैं ये सारा जैसे हेल्प करेगा पेशेंट को और हम लोग जैसे मूंग डाल का खिचड़ी रिकमेंड कर सकते हैं जैसे एकदम हल्का थोड़ा इतना ऑयल फ्री नहीं करना है लेकिन थोड़ा ऑयल दे उसको मूंग दाल या राइस मिला के जो खिचड़ी होता है ना ये हम लोग दे सकते हैं साबुदाना का खिचड़ी दे सकते हैं ठीक है पेशेंट को और अगर फ्रूट्स जैसे पपाया हो गया ये ले सकते हैं फिर मैंगो हो गया ले सकते हैं और सब्जी जैसे सूडिंग टू स्टमक होता है ना जैसे हो गया लौकी हो गया तलू हो गया ये सारा सब्जी ले सकते है पेशेंट जो इतना इफेक्ट नहीं करेगा वो इजीली डाइजेस्टेबल भी है तो हम लोग देखेंगे जो इजीली डाइजेस्टेबल हो वही देंगे क्योंकि जैसे लीवर तो डिटॉक्सिफाई भी करता है ना तो लीवर पे हम लोग लोड नहीं डालेंगे तो हम लोग सादा खाना देंगे मिसप्लेन ब्लैंड डाइट देंगे पेशेंट को जैसे उसको एडेड प्रॉब्लम फूड से ना हो ये ये सारा बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और पेशेंट अगर जैसे पेशेंट को रेनल प्रॉब्लम अगर नहीं है तो वो आलू ले सकता है फिर कोकोनट वाटर भी ले सकता है ये सारा ले सकता है पेशेंट कोई बनाना ले सकता है अगर इज नॉट ए रेनल पेशेंट मीन किडनी पेशेंट अगर नहीं हो तो तो ऐसे और फिर वेजेस थोड़ा थोड़ा वेजेस जो हम लोग को लाइक स्टमक के लिए ठीक रहेगा सूडिंग टू स्टमक वो वेजेस ले सकते हैं okay. तो ऐसे हम लोग मैनेज कर सकते हैं जो जॉन्डिस है जो बिली रुबिन जो हाई हो जाता है मैम इसी से संबंधित एक और सवाल आता है जैसे कि हल्दी टर्मरिक जो होता है पेशेंट्स कभी वो लेना छोड़ देते हैं जॉन्डिस हो गया वो लोग मानते हैं कि उससे शायद जॉन्डिस बढ़ेगा और एग का जो योग होता है उससे उसको भी ये ऐसे ही मानते हैं कि उससे भी बिलोरेबल्स लेवल्स बढ़ेंगे उनके तो क्या ये सही है ऐसे कंडीशन में लेना चाहिए या फिर उसको स्किप कर सकते हैं हाँ एक का तो हम लोग देखेंगे एग्स जैसा होता है ना तो टॉलरेट कैसे पेशेंट कर रहा है वो देखेंगे हम लोग अगर उनको टॉलरेट नहीं हो रहा है डाइजेशन में प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो तो एग्स हम लोग ऑफ करेंगे ठीक है और हल्दी जो है ना ये मिथ है ये हल्दी से कभी भी बिलोरिन बढ़ता नहीं है इनफैक्ट हल्दी तो इन्फ्लू एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटेड है ना और बहुत अच्छा है हल्दी का फिर हल्दी तो गुड फॉर हेल्थ ओके Say ka apne. Thank you so much. It was great to hear from you in a way that everybody could easily understand. Very much appreciated, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, moving ahead, we see that cancer treatments like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and surgery, or sometimes the combination of these treatments, kill cancer cells and also damage healthy cells in this process. 
So this causes various side effects of the cancer treatment and can affect the patient desire or ability to eat or drink. Side effects could include loss of appetite as uh, explained by our guest speaker, weight loss, mouth sores, dryness of mouth, sometimes dental problems, gum problems, and changes in taste, smell, nausea, and vomiting. So you see there are many challenges that a cancer patient faces during the treatment and it becomes equally challenging for a dietitian to tackle these problems at once. So here is the question in this context. Patients with oral and throat cancer usually complain of difficulty in swallowing, dryness of mouth, mouth sores, changes in taste and smell. I request our panelist, dietitian Manjari Bajpai, to tell us how you deal with such cases coming to you. Madam, you're on, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself. Thank you, Yasmin. Actually, when we come across these kind of patients, we basically read it like patients have sore mouth. Basically, the problem is inflammation in the mouth, and the, anything whatever they eat will be quite challenging. But sare cheese dijiye to unke muh mein laga hai fir wo nahi kha pate hain aise mein fir wo clear liquid jo jaise ma'am bol rahe the hum clear liquid wali cheeze prefer karte hain fir usme zyada tar agar patient ki problem nahi agar sodium deficient nahi hai to we can skip that salt in that khali obviously anti inflammatory hai isse halki problem nahi hai par clear soups mein humko uski bhi zarurat hai par जो देना होता है हम कुछ ऐसी रेमेडीज भी साथ में बताते रहते हैं क्योंकि शुगर हम नहीं दे सकते शुगर के असर बढ़ेगा तो शुगर और मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स हम नहीं दे सकते हैं क्योंकि मिल्क से भी प्रॉब्लम होगी और ये ज्यादातर केसेस में होता है अगर ओरल कैंसर है तो सबसे ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम तो ऐसे कंडीशन में ज्यादातर हम क्या करते हैं कि हम तुलसी के तुलसी में थोड़ा और साथ में ये मेडिकेशन क्योंकि और सारे जो भी वो असर के लिए रहे हैं उससे खास फर्क कभी अभी नहीं पड़ता है पर ये जनरल तो ये करके ऑर्डिनेंस ये सब ऐसे क्यों है रेडिएशन थेरेपी में भी ये प्रॉब्लम हुई है तो रेडिएशन में भी हमको उस वक्त हाई फाइबर डाइट देना है मॉडर्न मेडिसिन में नहीं मानते हैं कि फ्रूट का या वेजिटेबल का अपना कोई नेचर हो रहा है पर ऐसा नहीं है सब फ्रूट और वेजिटेबल के नेचर होते हैं कुछ ठंडे में माने जाते हैं कुछ नॉर्मल माना जाता है उसमें फिर हम उनको इस तरह के फ्रूट्स या वेजिटेबल्स बता सकते हैं जिससे कि उनको वो सूदिंग कैरेक्टर हो जिनका जिससे कि वो जैसे नारियल पानी हमने बोला वो हम दे सकते हैं क्योंकि मिल्क नहीं देंगे तो नारियल पानी से वो हम सूदिंग उनका वो करके अंदर हो जाएगा वो सब सूद आउट हो जाएगा फिर नहीं आता है सो वट्स योर टेक ऑन सुपर फूड्स देखिए नहीं क्योंकि मेरा जो प्रैक्टिस रहा है बीस तेईस साल का सुपर फूड जैसा कुछ नहीं है इट्स ऑल व्हाट वी आर ईटिंग डेली उनको ही हमको किस तरीके से किस फॉर्म में लेना है वही सुपर फूड का काम करते हैं जैसे सावन मैम ने बोला कि 
बीटरूट और कैरेट जूस इज नॉट ए मेडिसिन फॉर कैंसर लेकिन वो हमने भी कहीं स्टडीज में देखा था लोगों ने ये एक वैसे आया था एग्जाम्पल कि उस पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट ने सिर्फ कैरेट जूस लेके अपना कैंसर खत्म किया है बट दैट वॉज द डिफरेंट सिनारियो वो कुछ और रहा होगा उनके साथ बेसिक थिंग इज गिविंग एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट टू द पेशेंट तो एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट इज अवेलेबल इन लॉट्स ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स लॉट्स ऑफ फ्रूट्स तो कोई कोई कंसेप्ट है नहीं मेरे हिसाब से तो नहीं है सो आई डोंट बिलीव इन सुपर फूड ओनली दैट इट शुड बी बैलेंस न्यूट्रिशन every patient in any condition and that is the role where dietitians are coming in ki hame wo balanced diet us har us patient ko dena hai jiske thode problem thodi critical ha ji ma'am ye question mujhe aa raha hai ki सो so, जब प्रोटीन लाइक uh, like, माना जाता है कि प्रोटीन का रिक्वायरमेंट कैंसर में बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ जाता है एट द सेम टाइम हम लोग ये भी जानते हैं कि किडनी uh, इश्यूज जब होते हैं पेशेंट्स को किडनी uh, uh, के पेशेंट्स जो होते हैं उनमें प्रोटीन को बहुत कम दिया जाता है क्योंकि उसमें उन लोग के इसमें बॉडी में क्रियान लेवल जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा होता है तो उसको न्यूट्रलाइज करने के लिए हम लोग प्रोटीन कम देते हैं अगर कोई पेशेंट किडनी डिजीज और कैंसर दोनों साथ लेकर आए तो उस टाइम पे हम लोग प्रोटीन को कैसे मैनेज कर रहे हैं देखिए अभी भी जो नॉर्मल गाइडलाइन है उसमें है कि किसी भी कंडीशन में पेशेंट को हम पॉइंट ग्राम पर के जी वेट के हिसाब से हमको प्रोटीन लेना है क्रिया लेवल बहुत हाई है तो भी क्योंकि मैंने जो जहां तक मैंने पढ़ा है जितना मैंने जाना है क्रियाटेन अगर थ्री फोर तक भी है तो भी हम पॉइंट एट पर मेंटेन कर ले जाते हैं पेशेंट को अगर उससे ज्यादा है तो वो मेंटेन हो सकता है क्योंकि साथ ही साथ हम उसमें सप्लीमेंट भी दे ही रहे हैं जिससे क्रियाट हो फिर वो पेशेंट डायसिस ऑलरेडी होगा ही तो वो सारे ट्रीटमेंट तो उन्हें चलते ही रहते हैं सो अपटिल पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम प्रोटीन पर के जी बॉडी वेट के हिसाब से अगर हम वो मैनेज कर ले तो पेशेंट को हम इजीली मेंटेन करके हम उसका हेल्थ ठीक कर सकते हैं वंडरफुल मैम आई थिंक दैट इज मोस्ट ऑफ द कंफ्यूजन दैट पीपल हैव इन देयर माइंड व्हाइल डिसाइडिंग द न्यूट्रिशन फॉर सच पेशेंट्स आई वुड नाउ गो बैक टू आवर गेस्ट स्पीकर डाइशन सुवर्णा सावंत मैम आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू टू कैंसर इटसेल्फ एंड द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर इट मे कॉज पेन so pain can make it harder to perform normal activities and lower the quality of life of the patient pain control is an important part of cancer treatment plan what do you advise to control pain in your practice uh as such you cannot give any food for pain control it is just that you should keep yourself matlab hydrated rakho apne aap ko by having various types of liquids taki you if because agar dehydrated hote ho to cramps ke wajah se bhi aapko pain ho sakta hai okay to pain to uh, with your treatment is a side effect wo to hone hi wala hai but to control that pain the doctors are giving you certain medicines aur ye medicines agar bhooke pet liye jaye to aapki acidity badhegi aapke problems aur badhenge the quality of life still goes down that's why whatever your condition is try to eat whatever you can at that time jo bhi aapko soothing lage you have it whether it is a fruit it is a soup or something just so that you don't keep yourself empty stomach and you don't get dehydrated fir agar protein food mein lena hai to is waqt hum log hamara jo oral nutritional supplements bolte hain jo nutrition powders milte hain market mein which the dietitian will recommend according to your condition aise nahi ki over the counter ja ke koi bhi protein powder khareed le at these times the nutritional supplement powders are working 
drinking a lot because you can just keep on sipping them like a cold drink throughout the day jaise moon dekh rahe hain so it gives you instant energy also and in turn it will give you pain relief also nahi to vicious cycle bata rahe ho okay speaking about protein supplements ma'am uh, as they are artificially made do you think it will have the same beneficial effect as that of the uh, protein that we get it from our natural foods Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay, well, uh, no problem. I'll read it for you. Uh, we spoke about protein supplements, right? Yeah. Huh. So since those are artificially made protein shakes, protein powder, or protein bars, do they have the same beneficial effect or uh, as that of the food that we uh, proteins that we get from food? Okay. See, as a dietitian. मैं हमेशा रेकमेंड करूंगी कि आपको अपने प्रोटीन जितने भी नेचुरल फूड से मिले उतना आपको लेना है बट एक पॉइंट आता है कि आप वो नेचुरल फूड नहीं कंज्यूम कर सकते मतलब आपको म्यूकोसाइटिस है या बहुत पेन है अल्सर्स है तो आप कभी अंडा नहीं खा पाते हैं कभी कभी आप स्प्राउट्स नहीं खा पाते हैं तो तभी क्या काम करेगा तो अपने सूप्स तो आइदर यू टेक दाल सूप्स और समथिंग लेकिन उसकी न्यूट्रिशनल पावर और बढ़ाने के लिए एट दिस टाइम यू कैन इंक्लूड सम प्रोटीन सप्लीमेंट्स बट आपको उसके ऊपर डिपेंड नहीं रहना है कि बाबा इससे मिल रहा है दैट्स आई विल स्टॉप माय फूड एंड आई विल जस्ट स्टे ऑन दीज प्रोटीन शेक्स बिकॉज उनका भी टेस्ट कभी कभी ऐसा होता है सम पेशेंट्स कैन टेक इट सम पेशेंट्स कैन नॉट टेक इट दोज पेशेंट्स हु कैन टेक इट देन ट्राई टू डिपेंड ऑन इट कि मुझे खाना नहीं खाना है मैं चार बार ये पीऊंगा एंड दैट इज इट That is not a right way. So what I said earlier also, moderation is the key. Kisi cheese ko lit ke baar mat kijiye. Then it is not going to be of any use to you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. We also have a question from our audience. Uh, Mr. Joy Singh is asking us, can you please guide me what liquid diet we should follow when a patient is not taking solid food? You want me? He's asking that what sort of liquid foods should a patient consume if the patient is not uh, accepting solids? When the patient is not accepting solids, so घर में जो भी खाना बनता है ना try to blend it and give to the patient. For example, even upma अगर बनता है, तो make it a porridge style, liquid style. ताकि पेशेंट को लगे कि वो नॉर्मल फूड खा रहा है, लेकिन कंसिस्टेंसी उसका चेंज हुआ है as per the patient's requirement. राइट right? हम लोग खिचड़ी बना रहे हैं वो खिचड़ी के राइस के अगर दाने हमको चुभ रहे हैं लिक्विड में देना है तो सेम खिचड़ी डू एवरीथिंग इन द प्रेशर कुकर एज यू डू बट देन गिव इट वन ब्लेंड वन क्रश तो ताकि वो कंसिस्टेंसी इतनी सॉफ्ट हो जाए कि इट इज सेम सेम यू डू विथ योर वेजिटेबल्स डू नॉट एड एनी साइजेस एक्सेट्रा बिकॉज वो भी चुभेंगे सी देर इज समाइम्स अ पॉइंट वेयर सॉल्ट भी चुभता है पेशेंट्स को सो दैट्स वाई दी ऑलवेज इन कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट एज डायटिशन हम लोग ये देखते हैं कि हम इंडिविजुअलाइज केयर दें एक पेशेंट को जो डाइट चलेगा लिक्विड में वो ही डाइट दूसरे पेशेंट को शायद लिक्विड में नहीं चलेगा वो हमको चेंज करके देना पड़ेगा उसको पॉरिश देना पड़ेगा सूप देना पड़ेगा जूस देना पड़ेगा दूसरा पेशेंट खिचड़ी ले सकता है तो उसको खिचड़ी दे सकते हैं तो सेमी सॉलिड्स में यूजली सेमी सॉलिड या लिक्विड डाइट को मैं ये रिकमेंड करती हूँ कि जो भी घर में बनता है उसको थोड़ा लिक्विड फॉर्म में बनाइए और थोड़ा सा ब्लेंडर में ब्लेंडराइज करके दीजिए तो उनको भी लगेगा कि हम नॉर्मल फूड ले रहे हैं मैम यहाँ दो क्वेश्चन थ्रू कैंसर के रिलेटेड आए हैं बाय नैंसी शी इज आस्किंग कैन यू प्लीज टेल मी व्हाट डाइट फॉर द पेशेंट इन थ्रोट कैंसर एंड अनदर क्वेश्चन बाय देवराज कलिता दे आर आस्किंग द थ्रोट कैंसर पेशेंट जनरली हैव पेन एंड ब्रीथिंग प्रॉब्लम सो हाउ कुड वी दिखाई देता है तो उसमें क्या होता है हम लोग डायट जो अगर पेशेंट नॉर्मल है उसको अगर कोई अदर प्रॉब्लम नहीं है जैसे अगर रेनल प्रॉब्लम नहीं है या और कुछ डायबिटीज नहीं है या हाइपरटेंशन नहीं है तो हम लोग नॉर्मल डाइट ही प्रिस्क्राइब करेंगे 
ठीक है इतना सारा उसमें डाइट रेस्ट्रिक्ट नहीं करना है अच्छा से प्रोटीन लेना है कैलोरीज लेना है सारा कुछ मेक्रो माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय सारा कुछ लेना है अच्छा से ठीक है अगर उसको कोई एसोसिएटेड प्रॉब्लम है जैसे पहले भी डायटिशियन सुवर्णा सावन बोली है ना जैसे वेरी स्पेशल स्पेसिफिक डाइट होता है मीन इससे कस्टमाइज डाइट होता है कैंसर पेशेंट के लिए टेलर मेड डाइट होता है हम लोग को सारा पैरामीटर्स देखना पड़ेगा अगर उनको कुछ प्रॉब्लम है एसोसिएटेड तो उस तरह से हम लोग डाइट को मॉडिफाई करेंगे और देंगे बाकी तो थ्रोट कैंसर के लिए जैसे इन जनरल हम लोग का जैसे नॉर्मल डाइट ही चलेगा अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है हाँ थोड़ा सॉफ्ट करके ले सकते हैं जैसे स्वालोइंग में इजी हो तो ये सॉफ्ट करके ले सकता है और ब्रीदिंग प्रॉब्लम जो वो रहता है बट उसके लिए तो लाइक ही शुड टेक हेल्प डॉक्टर ही और शी अगर उसको हो रहा है तो डाइट से तो ज्यादा उसमें कुछ हालत में हम लोग सुधार नहीं कर सकते इम्प्रूव नहीं कर सकते तो यू टेक हेल्प ऑफ डॉक्टर और बाकी डाइट नॉर्मली चलेगा अगर एसोसिएटेड प्रॉब्लम्स ना हो एसोसिएटेड प्रॉब्लम्स है तो हम लोग डाइट को मॉडिफाई करना पड़ेगा वेल आई थिंक दैट वॉज क्लियर आई वुड नाउ मूव टू डाइटिशियन मंजारी वाजपेयी मैम दे आर मेनी अल्टरनेटिव डाइट्स वी से और वी कैन ऑल्सो से एंटी कैंसर डाइट्स दैट पीपल फॉलो सो वन सच इज द एल्कलाइन डाइट वट इज योर टेक ऑन इट मैम आप म्यूट करो मैम आप अनम्यूट करिए प्लीज जो एसिड है वो नहीं लेने चाहिए एसिडिक नहीं और जो है जो भी थोड़ी सी एसिडिक हम मान वो हम बहुत मॉडरेशन या बहुत कम अमाउंट में दे रहे हैं तो बेसिकली और और अब नया नया चला मैंने बीच में देखा था कि कुछ नया उन लोगों ने बोला है कि घड़े में पानी रखिए उसमें नींबू भी डालिए खीरा भी डालिए और क्या भी डालिए फिर कोई मशीन आई है जो सिर्फ एल्कल वाटर दे रही है जैसे आर के लिए था बहुत अच्छा है बहुत है बट अल्टीमेटली वही हुआ है कि आर का कोई मतलब नहीं है वो ज्यादा आपको प्रोन बारा है डिजीजेस के लिए वैसे ही इस तरह की मशीन वाटर लेने के ऐसा कुछ नहीं है नॉर्मल पानी है आप उसमें करके भी लीजिए वो ज्यादा इफेक्टिव है आपको हर तरीके से बजाने के लिए वो आपके लिवर पे भी असर करेगा आपके थ्रोट पे भी असर करेगा आपके लंग्स पे भी असर करेगा राधा देन है हम एल्कलाइन वाटर दे रहे हैं वो सब अपने ही खाने में जो नॉर्मल न्यूट्रिशन मैम अकॉर्डिंग टू यू क्या फूड्स जो एल्कलाइन नेचर में होते हैं जब वो आफ्टर कंजम्पन वो अपना पोटेंशियल रखते हैं कि बॉडी का जो पीएच लेवल है उसको चेंज कर सके अगर हम लोग ऐसा एल्कलाइन और एसिडिक पी के या जो भी है क्योर कर सकते थे तो समथिंग इज रॉन्ग विद अवर बॉडी बेसिकली बिकॉज अवर बॉडी इज सो मैनेज की तुम लोग कुछ भी अंदर पी एच डालो कुछ भी एल्कलाइन या एसिडिक डालो बॉडी का जो होमोजेनाइजेशन सिस्टम है वो पीएच को मेंटेन करता है अगर वो पीएच को मेंटेन ना कर सके मतलब यू आर सिक तो आप एसिडिक लो एल्कलाइन लो बॉडी अपना पीएच वापस वहीं पे लाके रखेगा सो यू आर ओनली गोइंग टू वेस्ट योर मनी ऑन सच फूड्स दिस इज अ कंप्लीट मिथ एब्सोल्युटली मैम दैट इज व्हाट आई वांटेड टू ड्राइव टुडे and ma'am i have read in your bio that you are very much versed in ketogenic diets uh, ketogenic diets which are primarily consisting of high fats moderate uh, high fats moderate protein and very low amount of carbohydrates uh, to produce ketones in the body it is controversial some studies indicates its therapeutic effect on cancer treatment 
Also, it's effect in cases of glioblastoma were promising in few studies. Do you make clinical application of these ketogenic diets for your patients? Uh, yes. First of all, this whatever I have said about ketogenic diets, uh, ketogenic diets basically are supposed to use on epileptic patients. The basic use only for epileptic patients and that too not all epileptic patients they have to go through a battery of a series of things wherein we first then find out whether ketogenic diet will work on it now coming back to cancers ketogenic diet cannot be applied to any cancers except glioma again for glioma where the patient is getting continuous seizures no epileptic medicine or seizure medicine has helped the patient. Then we come to ketogenic diet as the last resort. Otherwise, all studies have shown ketogenic diet will not help in reducing your cancer at all. In glioma, there are studies, but those patients also have to be picked and chosen by the doctors first. Okay, that clarifies for a lot of people, I think. So now we know that the proper nutrition is essential at all the stages from treatment to recovery. Uh, I mostly see patients becoming malnourished at some point in the cancer journey. So medical nutrition therapy can lower the risk of this malnutrition. So it's really very important to seek nutrition support and have a nutrition counseling from a qualified dietitian. I think we have come to end of the question answer session. I hope we have covered as many aspects as possible and hopefully cleared everybody's doubt. I think we will have enough of information to go ahead with their treatment. I request Dietitian Bernali to add a final note and conclude the session. Okay. Thank you so much, Yasmin, and thanks to Dietitian Suvarna Zailesh Savan for the wonderful session, very informative session from your end, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank you to Manjari also for the interactive session. Good questions and good answers. And, and last but not the least, thanks to Yasmin, our clinical dietitian at DS Research Center. Yasmin, she is a postgraduate from Osmania University Nutrition and Dietetics. And she is also a gold medalist in her academics. So she builds a good relationship of patient with food. Thank you, ma'am. I so also much. thank all the panelists thank for you. contributing for this webinar. And I especially thank our audience for joining us and patiently listening to us. We shall come back with another webinar soon to bring you more information on cancer. Once again, good evening, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.